All right, so our graph is done. The graph looks pretty good. The data table could use some work. Um, but remember, this is just scrap paper. Let's imagine that you're writing a lab report and you're in Microsoft Word. So I'm going to flip over to Microsoft Word now and we're going to pretend that we have our, our lab report written. So we might have paragraph, 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 and then we might have our data, data section. And we want to put our data table, and then we want to follow it by our graph, and then we want to go to our conclusion. So in here is where we want to embed our data table and our graph. So we want to jump it over to Word. You're not going to, going to print anything out of Excel and turn it in directly from Excel. Everything is going to be jumped over from here, your scrap paper, to your nice document even if you're just handing in a data table and a graph, like we are in this case. So here's my advice to you. Whenever, and trust me, please, please, please do this. Whenever you want to put something, an image, a, a graph, a table, anything, if you want to copy and paste anything into a Word document, I've learned this the hard way, you should create some space by just hitting the Enter key. Just hitting Enter a whole bunch of times. And then go back, and now, you can just go ahead and paste wherever you want. If you don't do that, then sometimes, for some reason, the uh, images or the data table and the graph, they get locked together, and then you have a very difficult time putting your cursor before it or in between them. So trust me, hit enter, even if you go, let it go all the way down the page and even go to the next page, just hit enter a bunch of times anytime you want to insert an image or a data table or a graph. So I'm going to hit enter a few times and I'm going to put a little note to myself. This is going to be for my data table. So I'm going to go to Excel. I'm going to highlight my data. I'm going to hit control C or I'm going to right click and hit copy. Not cut, copy. And then after that I'm going to go to Word and I'm going to hit control V or paste. Now that doesn't look very good. It needs some some lines and things need to be centered. It needs to be cleaned up. So here's what you do. See that box right there? Highlight that or click that and it'll highlight your table for you. And if it doesn't show up, just kind of roll your cursor over the table if it disappears. You know, I'm working down here. Roll your cursor over. It should pop back up again. And then click it and everything will highlight for you. Then you can go to borders and shading and you could do all sorts of crazy things here or I like to use a shortcut button you can go right here if you just want to add a bottom border click that notice the bottom border there if you just want a top border click that but the best one to do is just all borders so now we've got lines everywhere and if it's highlighted like this that means that from here on out every time you use that button it's just going to add all borders um, and you can play with this. If you want to change the lines and how wide you make them, you could go to borders and shading. You can change this to a very thick line. And then you can click OK. And now we have a crazy looking box, which we don't want. So play around with it if you want. The other thing you can do if you highlight your whole table is you can adjust the width of the columns. We don't need a very, very wide table if our data and our column headers uh, aren't very wide. But I'd like both my number of Mentos and my height centimeters to be on the same line and not top and bottom. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to find a point at which they can spread out enough. There we go. So the columns are wide enough to accommodate all the letters in there. And now the last thing that I want to do to make this look nice and neat is I want to center my data. Something to learn here. If you click and you highlight the entire table, notice how we have some blue overhang here? If we highlight the entire table, the next thing I do is going to affect the entire table. So if I right now, with this blue overhanging taking place, if I click center up here, if I click center, it's going to center the whole box in the middle. You might want that, so great. But if I just want to center the data, the titles too, then I'm going to highlight the data inside. See how it's different? Notice that there's no overhang. I grabbed the number sign and highlighted this way. 
that centers my data. So if I want to center the whole table, or if, let's try this. What if I want to right justify the whole table? There it goes. Left justify, center, and so forth. I can accomplish that by clicking this magic box here and making sure that I see the overhang. If I want to do that to my data, I highlight just the data. And again, right justify, left justify, center, and so forth. All right, now, I want to put my graph in here. I do not want my graph on the very next line below my table because then they'll get locked together and be very difficult to move or edit or anything. So what I'm going to do is, again, hit enter a couple times. At least leave one space between your data and your graph. You can even type the word graph so you don't forget to leave a space. And we'll get rid of these letters here. So this is where I'm going to put my graph. So I'm going to go back to Excel. I'm going to click somewhere in my graph. I'm going to hit Control C, or I'm going to right click and hit copy, and then I'm going to go back to Word. Oops, back to Word, and then I'm going to hit Control V or paste, and there we go. And I'm going to check to see that it's all there. We can reduce the size of the screen a little bit. I want to make sure that it's in within the margins. Uh, it's not going to get chopped off when I print. Everything looks pretty good. Everything that I did in Excel is still visible. And I'm all set. So there's my information for part one. Make sure you put your name. And you could also write part one.